Christians as a whole, nationwide, worldwide, not just here at Arise, but Christians are very, they want their ears tickled, and God's word speaks to that in the end times, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? They want to just they want things to tickle their ears. They want to hear hear good messages. They don't want to hear what's coming. Why would you not want to know what is coming? Uh, hallelujah. So you can be prepared. Amen. We all need to be prepared for what is coming. Right? Amen. The title of my message is when the word of God is watered down. When the word of God gets watered down, a lot of problems begin to happen. And you start to see that in a lot of the churches that are out there. We have a lot of churches that are built pretty much with a sand foundation. Amen? Yes. I'm here to tell you this church is built on a solid rock. Amen? Amen. And that church, and that rock is Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen? And now structurally, this, this building's coming apart, but the foundation is solid. Amen. This church has been here since 1899. June 20th of 1899, they held their first service in this building. Amen? Yes. And it's still here serving God today. What a blessing. What, what, what else is a blessing, and it's a tribute to those before you and I, is that we are only the second owners of this church. That's right. Hello? That should speak volumes to the ministry that took place at this building. Amen? Yes. And now we are taking that to a whole new level. Amen. In God's word. Yes. In God's truth. Yes. In God's spirit. Yes. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You and I have a, a job to do, and that is to teach the next generation that is up and coming. Yes. Parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, the best way for you and I to teach the next generation is by example. Yes. Amen. Wow, did it get quiet. Amen. That what I mean by that is you need to be walking it out. Right. You and I need to be walking out our lives according to God's word. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. We need to be walking out everything that God's word says. Here's where I come to find a little bit of a snare of the enemy on Christians today. They read something in God's word, but they don't take it seriously. They, they, they don't take it literally. Hallelujah. We need to be able to walk out what God's Word says. If God's Word tells us to do something, guess what we need to do? Do it. We need to walk it out. Yes. Hallelujah. We can't just sit back and be idle and just say, well, that, that really doesn't pertain to me. Well, if you're saying those words, guess what? It probably doesn't then. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Amen. This is you. This was me. Okay? Hallelujah. You don't want God to slap you. That hurts hard. Yes. Amen? Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. We need to be able to teach the next generation how to fish. Not give them a fish. That's right. Hello? Amen. We need to educate on how to do this. Here's an example. Before I became a pastor, the church that we were attending... TJ was just a little guy. I'm going to say seven years old, somewhere in that time frame, okay? Don't all look at TJ, right? He was somewhere about seven years old. The Spirit of God was on me. I went up, and I'm on my knees, and I am praising God. And tears are rolling down my face. I don't know what's going on behind me. I don't care what's going on behind me. I am now one with my Father. I'm in the Spirit with the Father. Have you been there? Let's go there again. Let's, in fact, let's abide there. Hello. Amen. We should abide in God's presence. But when I was on my knees, weeping and worshiping the Father, facing the front of the church, and I moved my hand this way and I hit something. And when I, when I opened my eyes and I turned, TJ, my son, was on his knees beside me with his hands up. Amen. Amen. We need to teach by example. You and I, we are the, the closest thing to Jesus that people are going to see. Non-believers. You understand that? Yes. To, to a non-believer, you are Jesus. Yes. To a non-believer, you are the Messiah. That's how they view you. How many, how many times have, have you messed up? How many of you made a mistake in your Christian walk and maybe you swore or you said a bad word and somebody corrected you and said, I thought you were a Christian. Yes. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. 
Hello, am I the only one? Okay, right? So, so you got to come to that understanding that they're watching you and I. Yeah. Everything that we do, in their eyes, you're the example. Be the example. Amen. Hallelujah. For this generation that is up and coming, they don't know Jesus. In fact, the media is pumping them so hard to not get an understanding of Jesus whatsoever. Right. Can, you, can you say amen to that? Amen. You and I are that Jesus, so be the Jesus. Yes. When, the, when the word of God gets watered down, things start to happen just like we're seeing now on, on the television. Yeah. Yeah. Television. Amen. Hello. So we have to, we, you and me, we've got to be able, I'm standing at the front door today. Right. And there were two gentlemen, Charlie and Doug, walking up the walkway. And they were bending down, picking up sticks and clearing off the walkway as they walked. Amen. Amen. That's, that's a Christian value yes. that's put in them. That's right. Some people would have just stepped right over it and kept going. They cleared the walk. That's right. Hello? It's something that simple sometimes. Yeah. If you see somebody that's in need, do you help them? Yeah. I pray you do. Yes. Amen? We've got to be Christ-like in that activity. As many of you know, I love the outdoors. I'm a hunter. Amen? Now, if you're an animal rights activist, I'm here to give you some, a little bit of accolades. Amen? Because you, you don't hunt. Well, I'm taking care of the animal that's killing your plant. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. That's how you talk to an animal rights activist or a vegan. Amen. Well, I'm taking care of the animal that's eating your plant. Amen. Amen. We're both happy. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're messing it all up. Right? <laughs> But if you watch wildlife, what does wildlife do? Wildlife teaches its babies how to survive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You got a mama bird in a nest, and she's got babies in a nest. And when mama bird thinks it's time to fly, guess what she does to those little babies? <laughs> fly or die. Yes. Hello? Yes. Fly or die. You and I got to kind of have the same mindset for our children. It's time to fly. Amen? It's, it's time to do your thing. It's time to get out there. But they can't fly unless you've given them good Christian values. That's right. Amen? You've got to prepare. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to prepare the next generation for what's coming. And if we don't know what's coming, how can we teach and educate somebody else that's what's coming? Does that make sense to you? This means yes. This means no. Okay. You're with me? <laughs> okay. Amen. I pray you are. We have to be able to educate so that they can survive. Our children need to survive in what is coming. And you and I are the best teachers possible for them, and we teach by our examples. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. I wrote down a couple things here that I, I see whenever the Word of God gets watered down. We begin to compromise. We start to, maybe we swear a little bit, or we curse a little bit. We're compromising. The Word of God's getting watered down. Or maybe we're trying to be more relatable to some people. Have you ever been in a work environment where everybody in the room is cursing and swearing, so you go ahead and throw a word in there too, just so you fit in? I don't do that. Amen. I ask them to please watch their tongue. If they continue, I get up and I leave. Amen. You've got to be the example. Because if they don't know, they're going to be in trouble. I have a very, very dear friend of mine. He has a little daughter. I believe she's six years old, something of that nature. Okay? And she runs her daddy. She tells him everything that she wants, and he does it for her, no matter what it is. Daddy, come. I want you to come here with me. Daddy, give me this. I want this. Daddy, daddy, I want, I want, I want. And we'll stomp her feet until daddy gives it to her. My conversation with him was, you're hurting your child. You're hurting your child. The, this book that I read says you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Yeah. Brother, I have a rod if you need it. Amen. 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 If you're afraid to do it, I'll do it for you. <laughs> Amen. Hello. Church, we need to be understanding. We're doing it out of love, not out of hatred, not out of anger. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sometimes you'll see people that are cursing, right? 
and swearing a little bit. And then it, maybe it becomes a little white lie. Guess what? In this book, I don't find those words anywhere. It's called a lie. That's right. It doesn't say a little white lie. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> right? No, it's a lie. It's false. We don't go down that road, do we? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Look at the person and say, we don't do that. Amen? We begin to listen to the enemy. Nobody's going to find out. Nobody sees you. Nobody's watching. It's okay. Remember what he said to Eve in the garden? Did God really say... Did God really tell you? He twists. Those words get twisted. You and I got to come to the realization that the enemy is here to do one thing. Kill you. He is here to take you out of this world. And to get you to be on his side. Don't do it. Don't go there. Know enough of your word. Get into your word. Live in your word. Amen? Here's what I find ironic. Whenever I'm in God's Word and I'm reading God's Word and I go out into the world or I go to the workplace for that day, there's somebody that walks up to me and they say something and I'm like, I got the answer. I just read it. That's not, by, that's not a mistake. Hello? That's God orchestrating things in your life. Hallelujah. And the more you begin to do that, the more God's going to pour out into you because now He could trust you just a little bit more. And the more you walk in that trust, then he gives you more. Yes. How many of you like more? Amen? Amen? Start walking in God's ways. You'll get more of him. And that should be enough for all of us. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> you start to see problems in your marriage when we water down the word. When we don't listen to what the Word truly says. When my wife and I, when we do marriage counseling, one of the biggest issues that we run into is a, we come to a marriage that is unequally yoked. That means that a, a believer in Jesus Christ married someone that's a non-believer, unequally yoked. I'm here to tell you, if you know somebody that's there, warn them, because you're going to have nothing but issues your entire life until that gets remedied. I promise you. I pro how can I make that promise? Because God's word said so. Amen. That's being unequally yoked. You will have nothing. You will be running on a treadmill uphill. Amen. It doesn't work. It just does not work. Marriage issues. We begin to want our way, not the Father's way. How many times have you seen that? Even in Christians. We want what we want and we want it now. Right? I think there was a commercial on TV about money or something, wasn't there? That's, that's my money and I want it now or something. Yes. Right? I can't remember who or what, but it doesn't matter. But that's just, that's kind of the saying. There's certain things that we just want our way and we want it now. Right? We can't handle that delayed gratification. We want immediate gratification. Don't we? Hello? Don't we? <laughs> Look at the person next to you and say, I want Jesus and I want him now. <laughs> Amen. We begin to point the finger at everybody else and what everybody else is doing instead of putting Jesus Christ first. In Matthew 5 and 7, it talks about that and it says, you first must remove the plank out of your own eye before you can remove the speck out of someone else's eye. Amen. In other words, you've got your own issues. If I'm going to try to correct you, I shouldn't be walking in the same thing you are. Right. If I'm telling you to stop smoking, I shouldn't be smoking. Right. Let me make it very plausible for you, right? If I'm here to tell you to stop drinking alcohol, I shouldn't be drinking alcohol. That's right. Right. Hello? Right? right. Yes? yes? You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. I, I get a lot of dead stares right now. I'm not sure what that's all about. Amen? Either you don't like what I'm saying or you're just too tired. I don't know. One of the two. Open your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 21. 2120, book of John. When you get there, give me an amen. John. 
John 21 and 20. It says, Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following. This is speaking of John. Who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that his disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? In very layman English terms, mind your business. Ain't got nothing to do with you. Amen? What he's going to do is between he and I. Has nothing to do with you. I preached a sermon early this year. Stay in your own lane. It's not your business what somebody else is doing. If they're doing what God has showed them or told them to do, it is absolutely none of your business. If John is staying behind because he felt the Spirit, he heard the Father, or possibly Yeshua told him himself to stay behind, he's doing what he was told to do. You and I need to do the same. Sometimes it's going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to, you're going to be walking and it's going to be a lonely walk. Can you say amen? amen? Some of us have been there. When you step out on a limb and you start professing with your mouth and living your life according to Scripture, there are those that are going to come against you. There are those that are going to tell you you're crazy. There are those that are going to say you're in a cult. Hello? It's hard to believe and you sit there and go, What? What on earth are you referring? What? Can I encourage you with these words? You are now separating yourself from the world. Amen. Amen. Come out from among them. Is God's word. Come out from among them. Be ye different. And it's okay to be different. It's okay to be separate from the world. It's okay to forget about the things of the world. And when you are separate, as, as, as Pastor Luigi spoke to this morning, right, of Sodom and Gomorrah, don't look back. Don't look back at the things that are going on in this life. Stay separate. Allow yourself to be a Christian. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, and give you direction. He is the voice of reason in your body. Last week we spoke about the DNA that's in your body. The DNA has God's name in your DNA. Yes. Amen? Yes. He's got a laminin in your body, which is the rebar that holds your body together. Laminin is in the shape of the cross. It's a protein molecule in your body. Yes. God has got His name tattooed and stamped all through you. Yes. Hallelujah? Yes. We should be excited about that. Don't allow anybody to change that. No matter what the cost. It may cost you your life. That's okay. You're going to be with Jesus. You have to look at it that way. And whenever they come to persecute you or I, give Yeshua praise because His Word said that's exactly what's going to happen to those who believe. That just means that this is more truth than what they're telling you. Hello? Oh, church, we've got to be prepared. Yes. Too many times I see as we lose focus. We, we lose our love for Christ in our lives when we water down the Word. If we love Jesus, we will not want to be obedient to Him or to the world. Amen? We're going to want to live our own lives. We're going to want to walk away from the things that Christ does. Here it is. Look, I'm a pastor. One of the worst things that you all hate about a pastor is when I walk up to you in the morning and I shake your hand and I say, how are you doing today? And I look you in the eye. Because if something's wrong in your life, you can't look at me. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Or you'll come to church and you'll avoid me like the plague. And I'm chasing you down the hallway trying to just say hello. And you're instantly, there's somebody else and you start talking to that somebody else. 
So if you just feel a presence that's standing behind you, it's probably me waiting for you to give it up. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Surrender. Because I know something's going on. Because He told me. And now I'm confronting you about it. You should love the Lord for that. When you get chastened of the Lord, praise Him. Don't get upset. Don't get mad. Praise Him. Because He is trying to prune you. He's trying to prune you so you don't produce more fruit. It's a blessing in disguise. We just don't know it yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, oh, come on. Hallelujah. There you go. Turn back to John 14. A couple pages back from where you are. 14.23 Jesus answered and said unto him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Say my word. My word. And my Father will love him. And will come to him and make our home with him. That deserves a repeat. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Yes. There you go. Now you're starting to understand. <laughs> he who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. If you don't love Jesus, you're not going to keep his word. The watering down of the Word. When the wa Word gets watered down, things become a little confusing, don't they? God is not the author of confusion. Is that not what the Word says? Amen. Amen. He's not going to bring you something that's going to be confusing to you. It's going to be crystal clear. If you want clarity from the Father, get closer to Him. Everything that I'm going to tell you today counts and depends upon you getting closer to the Father. Everything. Everything that you do, draw closer to the Father. Don't avoid chastisement from the Father or your pastor. I love you. I told you before, I would die for you. You should take that literally. Amen? Because there's truth. That's from the heart. I don't want to see any of you perish. Not one of you. We have to do the right things. Now more than ever. Now more than ever. It talks about the Helper. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach us all things. Too many times when we hear that, we either question it or we push Him away. Was that really God? I've done that. I'm sure you have as well. The closer I get to the Father, the more I understand His voice. And I hear His voice. And I know the direction that I'm supposed to go. And how I'm supposed to talk to individuals. And sometimes I'm supposed to run from individuals. You need to do that as well. There are people that are going to come into your life and they're going to poison you. There are people, can I just say it real plain? There are people that have left this church. And I know some of you still talk to those people who have left this church. And that's okay. Praise God. That, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you start avoiding myself, I know that there's an issue. I know that your mind is being poisoned by things that other people are saying, either about myself or about the church. I, I, I put it to you real simple. Let's all sit down and talk about it. Because there's a whole bunch of things I promise you that you don't know about the information or the person you're getting your information from yes. that's poisoning you. Yep. Amen? Amen? I'm here to give you the best understanding of the Scripture that I can that God has given unto me, as is Pastor Luigi. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 We need to put our mark on this life. Too many times we think that we can handle it. Or, I got this. You ever heard that before? I got this. 
There was an old, there was an old saying that used to be like, hold my beer. Yeah. Right, you know, right? Here, hold my beer. I got this. Yeah, I got this. I'm going to fix this. I told you before, when I played basketball when I was younger, I used to say, give me the ball. You want to win? Give me the ball. Right? Because I was determined to win. I didn't care if there was a minute left in the game and we were down by 14 points. Give me the ball. Get out of my way. Yeah. Amen? I'm playing to win. You need to walk your Christian life to win. Yes. Hello? Not just to slide in. Not just to have somebody carry you in. But to run in. Amen. Expecting to win. Amen. Because you know. Say, I know. I know. Therefore, I walk. Amen? Matthew 6.25, if you turn there, please. Too many times what I find a lot of us doing is worrying. We worry way too much about things that we cannot control. Worry comes whenever you hear a watered down word. Something that I shared with some other individuals just recently. When I go and I visit my father and I love my, my, my dad, my earthly dad, I love him very much. And he watches the news and he gets all fired up. Right? Right? And then, and then he's watch, he watches Fox News. And he, he's getting, for the most part, he's getting mostly the truth of what's really taking place in the world. So he's focused on all of that. He'll turn that off and then he'll turn on the local news. And he'll get all the lies. Yeah. Well, what it's doing is it's confusing him. Yeah. And then he becomes worried. So we have to understand, where is your news source coming from? Are they giving you truth? Where is your word coming from? Prayerfully, it's the Holy Spirit. That you are in God's word enough that the Spirit is giving you direction. The Spirit is giving you guidance. Does that make sense? So when you're getting that guidance, when you're getting that instruction from the Holy Spirit, you can walk out there with a zeal knowing that what you're saying and what you're doing is ordained of God. Make sense? Worrying will kill you. Worrying will give you bodily problems, physical problems, stomach issues. Hello? Stomach issues. Those who are diabetic, I'm li- listen, listen, it will make your diabetes worse. Because you're worrying about stuff. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 25, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? You need to understand Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Not one of us. We're not to worry. I'm a deer hunter. And I want you to come to this realization. I've I've seen lots of things. I was going to have pictures of Mega Buck up here on the wall, but then I think you might have thought I was crazy. All right? A white-tailed deer. All of you in here know what a buck is, right? He's got the horns. Okay. Whenever you have white-tailed deer, mainly buck is what I'm going to speak to, if they are worried and stressed out, their rack will show it. Their rack will not grow properly. Their body will not grow properly. When they're constantly worried. Have you ever watched deer eat? Right? They're kind of like... Right? That's because they got everybody's against them, including me. <laughs> they taste good. Amen. Amen. Their rack, if a buck is worried, their rack will be mutated. It will be smaller. They can have all the nutrition that you want, but if they're constantly worrying, stressed, Stress will cause a multitude of issues in your life. Multitude. 
migraines, overweight, ulcers, problems with circulation. Hello? That's all due to stress. It's all due to worrying. God's Word says get away from that. Stay away from that. Lean unto Him. Lean not to your own understanding. In all things, acknowledge Him. That's what we are to be able to do. Hallelujah. But if you see a white-tailed deer and it's small, you will hear, well, that's because there's a lot of hunting pressure. The racks can't get big because they all get shot. That's not necessarily true. It's not. It's because they're too stressed out because there's too much pressure. So the racks are going to be smaller. Have you ever gone to a deer farm and seen white-tailed deer in a pen or in a farm? Their, their racks are ginormous. My wife and I have friend, Amish friends over in Ohio. He raised the world's largest whitetail. It's called highball. And those of you that hunt and understand it, he scored 409 points. He didn't have 409 point points sticking out. There's measurements that they play. 409. That's a big deer. That's a big deer, right? But it's big because it was no pressure, no stress. Didn't worry about anything. It's in a pen. He gave him a bunch of girls to have fun with, and he fed them twice a day. He had no worries. His rack got enormous. If you go to a, a deer farm somewhere, and I challenge you to go through, or one of those drive through zoos, and look at the white-tailed deer in there. They're huge. And most of us at hunt go, where is that one I want to get one, right? Well, you've got to go inside of a fence, right? <laughs> That's illegal, right? Don't do that, right? Stop worrying. Stop letting people water this down for you. Start getting into this yes. daily. Daily. Amen. If I don't read this in the morning before I get up and start my day, or after I get up and start my day, if I don't read this, my day is bad. It just does not go right for me. I need this before I need coffee. I need this before I need breakfast. Amen? Amen? You understand where I'm I need this before my day starts. So for some of us, we have to get up a little earlier sometimes to read this maybe before we go to work. I have a solution for you. Get up earlier and read this before you go to work. Problem solved. Amen? You figure out how to get up earlier. If it's going to bed earlier, then go to bed earlier. An epiphany. Amen? I know people when they wake up in the morning that they go to this first. Let's see what's on Facebook this morning and what occurred. And the next thing that happens is an hour goes by and you haven't read this. And now it's too late and I've got to go to work. Ultra Amen. That means that this has now become your God. Did you hear what I just said? This becomes your God. As opposed to Yahweh. Your Heavenly Father. I, I told you as I started this message that God's been working on me for this message. The reason He's been working on me for this message is it's for you. Because what I just came out of my mouth was of Him, not of me. Therefore, you needed to hear it. Yes. Hello? Yes. Or are you following? Yes. Right? So we need to be able to walk in that understanding. The best way to do that, church, is to read your Bible. Devour your Bible. Yes. Devour it. God says that we are to meditate on it when? Day when? Day and, day and night. Not just Day. Day and night. That means we're to be in it. This book, and I believe I shared this with my brother almost 25 years ago. This book has every answer to your life's issues. This book. 
Can you say amen to that? Amen. Look at the person sitting next to you and say, I love my pastor. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand. Thank you.